what's up guys shazad here and this is my full review of lenovo vibe k4 note i have been using it as my daily driver for more than 15 days now and here's what i have to say starting with the build and design it has a 5.5 inch display uh, that means it is a big device thanks to those bezels and front facing speakers so for most people one hand use is not going to be possible but even after that the phone is very lightweight just under 150 grams the whole device is made up of plastic and there is chrome ring to the side the back has a matte look to it it is a soft touch plastic honestly i like the design it's very sleek and simple my only complaint is the back is very slippery and it also attracts fingerprints very easily the back panel is removable and inside there are two sim card slot and a memory card slot to expand that 16 gb of internal memory up to 128 gb but unlike the k3 note the battery is not removable anymore now let's talk about the display and the speakers because in my opinion the game is strong here all thanks to dolby atmos equipped dual front facing speakers which goes very well with that 5.5 inch 1080p display and display has a slight warm tone to it contrast and saturation is decent enough you can increase the saturation if you want outdoor visibility and viewing angles are good and i have no complaints about that now let's talk about the speakers actually let's hear it So as I said, game is strong here. It has a Dolby Atmos driver. There is an app which you can use to tweak the sound. But even if you never touch it, uh, the audio quality is straight up top notch considering the price of this phone. It doesn't distort at high volume, decent enough bass and call quality slash volume is also good enough. Overall, if you want a phone with excellent front facing speakers at this budget, definitely check out the K4 Note. Another thing that surprised me a lot is its fingerprint scanner. Uh, there was a time when these 50 and 60 thousand rupees flagship phone had a fingerprint scanner which barely even worked and now these budget phones have a fingerprint scanner which actually works really really well. Scanner's placement is perfect and just like Nexus and OnePlus 2 it wakes up the device and takes you straight into the UI. The only annoying thing is you can only register up to two fingers but when it comes to accuracy it is very very good. And apart Apart from just unlocking the device, you can use the fingerprint scanner to do some other things like tapping it once to go back or in the camera app you can tap it to take pictures. So speakers and fingerprint scanner, good job Lenovo. Now let's check out the camera. There is a 13 megapixel sensor on the back with f2.2 aperture and dual tone dual LED flash. The secondary shooter is 5 megapixel. Here are some snaps from K4 Note. Pictures retain good detail even when zoomed in. Dynamic range is decent and you can always use HDR mode for some improvement in shadows. Camera is good enough in bright daylight but as the sun goes down it really starts to fall apart. Like that freaking sun is its power just like that jadu from Koi Mil Gaya. <laughs> The flash module is powerful, though there are two different color temperature flash to give better white balance and skin tones. It is really funny that in reality it does totally opposite to that. White balance and skin tone is terrible, terrible, pathetic and I would never recommend you to use flash especially for group photos. Here's a picture of me and my friend. At first you might say that it's a decent pic but wait until I show you the corrected image. Here you go. Now you get what I'm saying, like come on Lenovo, that jadu thing was just a joke, I'm not an alien. The skin tone is very pale and there is no magenta shift at all. And I have taken a lot of pictures with the flash and the results were the same. When it comes to video, the maximum resolution here is 1080p. It, it, the quality is decent, nothing great, there are artifacts and over sharpening going on. There's going to be some shake in the video because there is no hardware or software stabilization at all.
But when I attached it to my 3-axis image stabilizing system, everything is changed. Just that stabilization makes it much more pleasing and the videos looks much better. So what I'm trying to say is, it is capable of producing some good results. Moving on, let's check out the hardware and the software. Processor here is a 64-bit octa-core MediaTek 6753, clocked at 1.3 GHz. RAM is 3 GB and all the graphics are handled by Mali T720 GPU. Even though K4 Note's processor is underclocked from 1.7 GHz to 1.3 GHz, I gotta say the performance is a lot better than K3 Note. Where my K3 Note had problems running apps like Facebook and Hangouts, this phone just flies through it. Maybe it's the optimization or maybe extra gig of RAM. So the day-to-day -day performance and normal apps, this phone can easily handle that. And when it comes to gaming, I have tried lots of light and heavy games on this. All are playable, just a few minor frame drops on games like Modern Combat 5 and Real Racing. But yeah, it's totally playable and there is no overheating. As far as software goes, it is running on Lenovo's Vibe UI on top of Android 5.1. As far as Vibe UI goes, there are some useful features, but uh, there are lots of lots of pre-installed bloatware here. But the good thing is it can be easily uninstalled. And from that 16 GB of internal memory, around 10 GB is available on the first boot. You can use OTG and apps can be transferred to SD card as well. and after installing some of our basic apps, the free RAM was around 1 to 1.2 GB, which was enough to run the phone smoothly. Battery life was actually pretty good. I easily got a full day of use with a screen on time of four to four and a half hours. And this phone also supports charging speeds up to quick charge 1.0. And in our testing, the phone charged from zero to 50 in around one hour. So now it's conclusion time. So is the K4 Note worth it? On one hand, I see K4 Note as a very good media consumption device with those awesome front-facing speakers, good display and promising battery life. While on the other, competitors like LETV is giving much more premium build quality, better performance, but no memory card slot or no front-facing speakers. So the choice is yours. I'm gonna keep this device anyway because I listen to lots of music and watch lots of videos on my phone and I just keep coming back to those front-facing speakers. Well, that's pretty much wraps up for this video. I hope you all have enjoyed this. If you did, then hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. My name is Shazad. This was my review of K4 Note. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.